This is the helm console. Here you see a readout of the basic information of the ship. Over on the right, these buttons control the main screen. The helm and weapons consoles can control what the main screen is showing to you and your crew. On the lower left are the two controls for the speed of the ship. You can control the impulse engines and the warp drive, up to warp 4. In the middle bottom is the maneuvering slider. You can turn left or right, dragging on the slider, or using the arrow keys, or the joystick, or simply clicking on the screen to steer to that direction. The zoom controls let you shift through four levels of zoom on your tactical display. When enemies are near, always remember to raise the ship's shields, making them active. Lower the shields again to make them inactive, which saves energy. When we get within 600 meters of a station, you can initiate the docking sequence by clicking on the Request Dock button. Dock to replenish energy and torpedoes. This image in the corner is your 3D ship status view. It shows any damage as red dots. This is the weapons console. Like the helm console, you see ship information on the left and control the main screen with these buttons on the right. However, the weapons officer doesn't drive the ship. She shoots things. You can control the zoom level of your display, and you can raise the ship's shields when the ship is close to enemies. The Artemis carries four types of torpedoes. ECM damages the shields of enemies. Mines fall behind the ship and have a powerful blast radius. The Nuke is a homing torpedo with the deadly warhead of a mine. Type 1 homing are the common, simple torpedoes at your disposal. Choose which torpedo you want and then choose a tube to load it into. Once the red bars are filled, the torpedoes are in the tubes and ready to be fired. An enemy appears on the tactical display, so it's important to raise the shields. Now that the enemy is visible, you can lock the target by clicking on it. The spinning blue reticle shows that he is my locked target. Your beam weapons require a lock on the target and the target must be inside the red firing ox visible around my ship. At longer distances, the appropriate weapon is a torpedo. You click the fire button to launch from each individual torpedo tube. It's usually wise to reload a tube after you've fired. With a target lock, your torpedoes can hit the enemy from any angle. Without a lock, Torpedoes fire from the front of your ship and try to detect and home on targets. These torpedoes manage to damage the enemy's front and rear shields, turning them yellow on your tactical display. The engineering console shows an information overview about the Artemis much like the weapon and helm consoles. It also shows the 3D cutaway view of the ship, which you can spin by clicking and dragging. These blue dots are different systems on the ship. For instance, the warp engines consist of several of these dots. This data readout is a simple display that shows how many of the system points on a ship are damaged. As long as primary beam shows 100%, all of the primary beam system points remain undamaged.
There are three damage control parties on the ship, shown as blinking, diamond-shaped icons. Click to select one, and click on the location you want them to go. Now the damage control party is moving through the ship to its destination. When damage appears on the ship as red dots, you can direct your damage control parties to go fix the damage. When the autonomous button is turned on, the damage control parties will automatically move to fix damage, but you can be more efficient by guiding them yourself. While your ship is undamaged, the engineer's job is to control power to these eight systems using these slider bars. For instance, if the ship is attacking an enemy with beams, you can overcharge the beams, making them more powerful. Warning! This builds up heat in the system, and if you let it go to the top, the primary beam systems will be damaged. We'll pull the power back, but we still have a large amount of heat in the system. We can counteract the heat by adding points of coolant to the system. Now that we've added coolant, we can see the system is cooling down. The ship only has eight dots of coolant. Coolant is not depleted or used up, but there is a limited amount. Once you've allocated eight dots of coolant to various systems, no more coolant can be used until you free some up. The engineer needs to pay attention to what's going on in order to control and overcharge systems when it's appropriate. If the Artemis is going head-to-head -head with enemies, you'd overcharge the front shields. When running away or heading back to base, increase power to warp. When the helm officer is turning behind an enemy, you'll want to overcharge maneuvering. Remember, try to keep things cool. This is the science console. Click and drag to view every inch of the sector the Artemis is currently defending. I'd like to point out all the units and terrain that can show up on your sector map. Most important is your ship. Here, Artemis, the green dot. You are here. Your job is to protect these four yellow space stations from being attacked and destroyed by the red enemies. Most of the enemies are not red, but white, because they haven't yet been scanned. You must scan them by selecting them and using your scan button. They will also be scanned when they get close enough to a friendly base or ship. Clicking on this enemy shows that he is a Skaron Enforcer. To intercept him, move the Artemis towards him. The proper direction is 206 degrees. The distance between the Artemis and this Enforcer is currently 17,000 meters. A single scan will also show you the exact values of his front and rear shields. You can click on nearly anything in the sector, like this station, or even the Artemis itself. This sector has interesting terrain. These purple blobs indicate nebulas. Enemies like to hide inside nebulas. But your science sensors can see through nebulas and spot the enemies. Inside a nebula, the Artemis can also hide from enemies, sneaking up unseen from behind. These groups of vertical brown dots are asteroid belts. The Artemis can be damaged by hitting an asteroid at high speed, and asteroids can get in the way of your torpedoes. These regular white groups of blinking dots are minefields. Each mine can cause serious damage to the Artemis, enemy ships, and friendly ships like this destroyer, which is already too close to this minefield for comfort. 
Your communications officer can order friendly ships to change course and to defend stations and other ships from enemies. Down below DS3, your console is picking up a strange reading. That's a space monster. It will chase and eat nearly anything it gets near. Up here, this blue circle signifies a black hole, or singularity. It sucks everything into itself, and is also very dangerous. Finally, to the right here, your console is picking up a pot of space whales. Space whales are fragile and harmless, and quite pretty to look at. Our scientists still have little information about where they come from, or how they live in deep space. On the left side is your main zoom control. Zoom in and out by clicking on the various levels, or clicking the top and bottom arrows. If you've selected an enemy, and then zoom in, the map will automatically center on the enemy. This helps when selecting a large group of enemies. Once selected, you can zoom in to see exactly how many enemies belong to that group, and then you can scan them. Until a scan is completed, you usually can't see which enemy is which in a fleet. Once you've scanned an enemy, you'll get information about him. But for enemies, you can choose to scan a second time. This second scan will reveal more data about the enemy. For one thing, you'll be able to see readouts of any damaged systems on the ship. You'll also be able to see his shield frequency spectrum. These five bars show which frequency is strongest for the shield of this enemy ship. Currently, A is the weakest. Your job as the science officer is to tell this to the weapons officer. The weapons officer can tune her beams to be the most effective against that frequency. This is the communications console. It shows messages that your ship received from all around the sector. In this particular case, it shows that our stations are under attack. But you're not here just to listen. The communications console is the voice of the Artemis. And to talk, you use the transmit button. We'll choose station and we'll pick which station and ask for a status report. DS-1 replies with detailed information about their shields, what torpedoes they have, and what they're currently building. You can use the transmit button to send messages to another player's ship in a multi-bridge game. In this demo, your ship is the only player's ship so no options appear here. You can also talk to enemies. This list is sorted by distance, so O38 is the closest to your ship. You can ask for surrender, or you can use one of three taunts. That taunt worked perfectly. O38 is now moving towards your ship in a blind rage, at least for a few minutes. You can talk to a station and inform them when your ship is about to dock. You can also order the station to build a specific type of torpedo. If you want to talk to a friendly ship, like this destroyer, you can get a status report. You can tell them exactly which way to go. Tell them to attack close enemies. Tell them they can go on their way, or tell them to go defend a station or other ship. The comms officer is the voice of the ship, and like the science officer, you cannot do your job silently. You have information that no one else has, so tell your crewmates what you've heard, 
and what you're saying.